Hi, I'm Brandon Grizzly. I'm a high school math teacher. We're looking at the sine law today and we're just going to look at it for acute triangles. There are some situations that you'll get into where the sine law is ambiguous, where you have more than one answer, and uh, we're not going to do those today. So, the way the sine law works is this. If you have a, a triangle like this one, and we label it A, B, C, and uh, remember the we often label this with opposite sides using the same letters. So there's vertex A and there's side little a. There's B and little b, C and little c. So we label opposite sides with the same letters as the opposite angles. And what we have is that if we take a ratio of two sides, it's the same value. That ratio is the same value as the ratio of the sine of the opposite angles. So one way to write that would be, for example, if you had A and B, A over B, A divided by B, that ratio is the same as sine of big A over sine of big B, the opposite angles. Those are, those are the interior angles. Angle B would be this one right in here. Uh, and you could do that for every pair, and you can flip them all over. So B over A is sine B over sine A. Or what happens is we, we, uh, we generalize this, or, or maybe rearrange this, and we realize that we can have sine B over B equals sine A over A, or vice versa, like flip it over. And so we'll often write it like this, A over sine A equals B over sine B, and that also equals C over sine C. And then we can also flip these, so we can rewrite the whole business as sine A over A is sine B over B, uh, which is sine C over C. And it's really important that you get these straight. These are capitals on the top because those are angles. A, B, and C. And these are lowercase letters down here because those are side lengths. A, B, and C there. Okay, so what this means is if you know some part of your triangle, for example, if you knew three out of these four values, maybe you knew angle A and two sides like A and B, then you'd be able to find the remaining missing thing. Okay, so let's try it with an example. Let's call this A, B, C, and let's say angle A is 70 degrees, and side A, I'll write it in here, little a, is uh, 3.25, and let's say you know one other uh, side length. Uh, we'll do the B one here, which is uh, 2.82, that's B. So the question is, can you find the other values in here, and particularly, can you find this other side over here? Uh, side C. So let's see what we can do. Uh, we're going to use this exact setup here. We know capital A, we know little a, we know little b, we don't know capital B. So let's see, we have sine of 70 degrees divided by A, 3.25, equals sine of B, well we don't know that, let's just write that down, over uh, little b, which is 2.82. So I can rearrange this, multiply both sides by 2.82. On this side I have sine b, over here I have 2.82 times the sine of 70, and that's divided by 3.25. I'll just grab my calculator, and uh, this I'll show you this on an iPhone, these are popular. Uh, I'm going to do 2.82 sorry about that, 2.82 times, let me clear it again, 2.82 times sine of 70. On here I press 70 and then I press the sine key. Some calculators you do that in the other order. And now I'm going to divide by 3.25 and I get a number that should be less than 1. It should be between negative 1 and positive 1 all the time with sine. And in particular here it's always going to be between uh, 0 and positive 1. So this is approximately equal to 0.815. Okay, and now how do I find out what value we need for B? Well, I'm going to take the sine inverse of both sides. Maybe I'll write this out really in a lot of detail. Sine inverse of 0.815 is the sine inverse of the sine of B, which is a weird way of just saying 
B. You sort of take the sign and then you undo the sign. That's what this does here. So this will give us B on the calculator, sign inverse. You'll see there's no sign inverse button yet, but if I press the second function, there it is right there, sign turned into sign inverse. Press that once, and you get that B is about uh, 50, I'll write down some decimals, 54.6 degrees, approximately. Okay, that's good. Well, what can we do now? So we, let me write that in there, 54.6 degrees. So we had an angle and two sides, and now we have an extra angle. I can actually figure out what C is now, can't I? Because I know that angle C plus 54.6 degrees plus 70 degrees is equal to 180 degrees, because the three angles in a triangle always add up to 180. Okay, so if you want, grab a calculator, take that value, oops, 54.6 plus 70 is 124, and I guess I should have taken all that away from 180. I get that angle C is uh, 55.4 degrees. Okay, I can write that in now. Those are really close. 55.4 degrees. They're very close. Okay. What that, that'll mean then that this angle or this side length up here should be very close to this side length here because this is almost an isosceles triangle. Well, I can find that side length by using my ratio up here, including sine c over c. I only don't know little c now, but I know big c. And let's use the original a values because they're more accurate than the ones that I rounded off down here. So we're going to use the a and the c parts of this. So I have uh, maybe I'll do it right over here. Uh, I'm going to use C over sine C, because I want to find the little c value, is A over sine of A. Okay, little c we don't know. Sine of C is the sine of 55.4 degrees, approximately. Little a is 3.25, and sine of 70 is sine of big A. Okay, so that means that C equals 3.25 times the sine of 55.4 degrees, all divided by the sine of 70 degrees. That seems calculator worthy to me. 3.25 times 55.4 sine divided by 70 sine equals, yeah, 2 point, oh, that was terrible, 2 point, uh, about 2.85, approximately 2.85. Let me write that up into our diagram here, about 2.85. So now we have the three sides of the triangle and the three angles of the triangle. And in this case, we had an angle here and two sides. So we, we often will call that side, side, angle. And it's important that that angle is not this one down here between these two sides. It has to be opposite one of those sides. Okay, that's sort of the first major case for using the sine law. And we have another one. So that's one where we knew this two sides and an angle. Let's do a little bit different one here. Um, how about like this? Um, let's use some different letters. We'll use uh, D, E, and F. Uh, and in this case, I wanted to use two angles and one side. Okay, so this let's call this 36 degrees and we'll call this one uh, let's say 50, I'm gonna, gonna make sure I get this right, 56 degrees, let's call it that. Okay, and so I've got two sides, or sorry, two angles and I'm gonna put a, a side in here as well. I'm actually gonna put this side over here, let's make this one six. Okay, so this is uh, angle, angle, side, which, or you might say side, angle, angle, 
or angle, angle side. Either way of saying that is fine. So let's see what we know. Uh, this is little f. We don't know little d. We don't know little e. And we don't know big F over here. Okay, well, let's see what we can figure out. Well, hmm, I can't use the sine law yet because this side is not opposite f. Or sorry, this, this side opposite f, I don't know this angle f. I don't know e. I don't know d. I'm not really set up to use the sine law yet. Well, I'm pretty close, though, because I know something about triangles. Again, I know that 36 degrees plus 56 degrees plus angle f is equal to 180 degrees, or f is 180 minus 36 minus 56. That's pretty handy. So that's uh, 180 minus, let's see, that's uh, 92, right? So that means it's 88 degrees. Angle F is 88 degrees. Sweet. So now, now that I know that, look, I've got an, a side and an angle opposite it. There's an angle and I can find side E or side D pretty easily now. So let's do that. Let's find side D. Uh, D over sine of capital D is little f over sine of capital F. Little d we don't know. Sine of big D is sine of 36. F is 6. And little f, or big F rather is 88. So we're looking for the sine of 88. We're going to rearrange this. We have d equals 6 times, this is uh, being multiplied by both sides, sine of 36 degrees divided by the sine of 88 degrees. Once again, that is calculator worthy. Sine, or sorry, 6 times sine of 36, 36 sine divided by 88 sine equals about 3.53. We'll write that in the diagram here. Okay, we have one side left to find. That side is E, and we're going to use this. Oh, sorry, we're going to use the same setup. E over sine of E is F over sine of F. That means E over sine of 56 equals 6 over sine of 88 degrees. Rearranging again, 6 times sine of 56 divided by sine of 88. 6 times 56 sine divided by 88 sine equals about 4.5. 9, 8. So that goes in our diagram right here. 4.98 units. So we've now solved a triangle where we knew two angles and one side. You can know any two angles and any side and that'll be enough because you can find the remaining side using what you know about triangles. Once again the other kind is when you have an angle and two sides and the two sides can't we call often call it contain that angle. The angle can't be the one that those two sides join together to give you. If you have those situations, you're going to need something else, uh, which is called the cosine law. And once again, please remember that if we're working with acute triangles, this is fine. If you might have an obtuse angle, then this is a little bit more complicated. I hope that helps.